Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Back from the dead. It is I, Professor Oleander. And, um... Sorry for the, the length of time in between. It's just been insanely busy. A lot of stuff going on at work. A lot of stuff going on in real world. Um, but, because Red Dead Redemption 2 is getting ready to come to PC, I wanted to get back in the sort of mantra of making videos again because I plan on recording for that one. That's why I haven't done any more of uh, Red Dead 2 because I'm sort of a pain in the ass recording from my PS4 because I don't have a capture card. So I had to record on the PS4, upload it to a jump drive, put that on my computer, then edit it, and then render it out and then um, upload it to YouTube and it was just too much of a pain. On PC, I can record straight from PC, edit it, render it, and then upload it. So, plus it'll be in 1080. Um, will look a whole lot better and there's just all kinds of stuff. But anyway, I've actually been meaning to do this video for a really long time. I uh, just never got around to it because this game takes quite a while to play and um, I'm actually in the middle of uh, making food and it's going to take about two and a half hours so I've got a little bit of time to kill before before that's done so I said I'll do this one today. So this is Ultimate General Civil War. This was made by Game Labs which uh, was created by a modder by the name of Darth Vader. Now, Darth Vader did all of the Darth mods for the Total War series. So, Darth Mod Empire, Darth Mod Napoleon, Darth Mod Shogun 2. <coughs> then he created... He created Game Labs. They made the game called Naval Action. Then they made Ultimate General Civil War. They made this game, and they're working on two other games now. Uh, one is Ultimate Admiral Age of Sail, and the other one is Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. I have Dreadnoughts. I went ahead and got it the other day. I'll plan on making a video on that one because the game is... <laughs> the game kind of blew me away by how in-depth it went. But today we'll focus on this one. Um, but Game Labs is actually getting it together. Naval Action, I play from time to time. It's sort of... It's been a really long time in early access, and... Um, it, the shine sort of wore off of it, and... They have a PvP server and a, and a war server, which is... Or, I'm sorry, uh, the PvP server is the war server, and the PvE server is the peace server. And... There was a lot of toxicity on the PvP server, we'll put it that way. So that game is kind of... I don't play it as much, just because it, it's it's just not as fun anymore. It's more grindy. Uh, it's a very It was always a hardcore game to begin with, but it's even more so now. But enough about that. We'll talk about this game. Um, over the course of playing it, I'll, I'll tell you some of the things that I like, some of the things that I don't like. Um... I do tend to play this game quite a bit. Uh, there are some mechanics in it that really aggravate the piss out of me. And we'll talk about that when we get to it. But for right now, let's start a campaign. And uh, let's see here. Dreamed of a uh, military oh, officer destined to pardon nation and glory. Stand. It's just sort of this a back story. So you get to choose. This is sort of like... Permanently. I'm trying to think if there's a game that I've played that's similar and to this. I'll talk about the the I gameplay in general once we get into it, but I'm trying to think if there's another game that sets up like this. I know that I Ultimate General Gettysburg is set up sort of the, the same way, where you can kind of pick of the attributes of your opponent, whether they're aggressive, whether they're defensive, the whether they're cautious, uh, and in that way it's sort of set up like Sid Meier's Gettysburg, because you remember... Um, if you've ever played it, you can kind of set it up the same way where you 
you pick if you're all if your opponent is aggressive or if they're prudent or if they're uh, very very cautious and depending on what you pick um, determines the outcome of the battles this one is different from that it's different from ultimate general Gettysburg which is the precursor to this one in that you don't really choose who your opponent is or how your opponent behaves you choose what sort of attributes you start with so you see here if you pick the ta the tactician you get plus one to army organization plus one to reconnaissance and then strategic uh, strategist I don't know why I was trying to say strategy strategist you get one to army organization one to training and then logistician you get army organization and logistics um, this is one of the things that kind of irks me about this game is that it doesn't really explain and I should mention that the, the, the creators of this game are European so there are some things that don't translate over 100% well um, to an American audience but like army organization determines the maximum size of your army so um, as you go up in army organization you get you can have more men per brigade um, at certain ranks of or after a certain number of tick marks in the army organization you can have more brigades per division and then uh, you can increase them again and then you can have more divisions per core um, reconnaissance I'm gonna go ahead and say this reconnaissance to me is pretty much useless uh, and I'll talk about that a little bit later but knowing how big the enemy army is is kind of pointless and uh, I'll explain it a little bit later training um, I guess I should talk about that one later too but I'll just say that that's just the cost of repl replenishing troops as it says and the logistics that's just how much um, ammunition you go into battle with um, I am probably going to take this one, so strategist, and the new ones we've got here are medicine, which means after a battle your losses are reduced, because more men are, are able, um, a casualty in battle is not necessarily a death, a casualty in battle means that you're unable for duty so that can be wounded that can be missing that can be killed um, so what that does is that modifies the number of people that are available to you after a battle so if you may have had a thousand casualties in a brigade in one battle and if you the higher your medicine score is that number may be reduced to well you only you only lost 800 as opposed to a thousand and again, there's reconnaissance. Not really going to worry about reconnaissance. Um, so these two are pretty much useless to me. The the one that's going to give me the most most bang for my buck is going to be artillery. And we've got a new one here. You've got economy, which is this is going to be the amount of funds that you're going to get from every engagement. And then you've got politics over here, which politics kind of goes hand in hand with money and recruits so this is money only and this is money and recruits so this one is probably going to be more suitable than the other two you're going to get plus three on training um, in the early part of the war it's not going to be that big of a deal but this is so I'm going to pick politics uh, there's really no difference between the two of these other than the you're going to get higher morale for victories under the Confederate side than you are on the Union. You're also going to start with a lower, um, what do you want to call it, a lower pool of recruits. So the number of people that you can actually put into the army is going to be lower when you're on the south than on the Union side. You're also going to have more money on the Union side. You'll have more recruits available. 
Um, the Confederate side is kind of, sort of, in a way, hard mode. Union is not necessarily easy mode, um, but you do have quite a bit of an advantage. So we're going to pick Confederate. And I will say this. I have played on all three of these. Um, if you feel sadistic, or uh, what's the name for it? A masochist. Go for this one. Otherwise, I just play on Brigadier General because this one gets like ridiculously hard um, to the point like it's like unfair. And what happens is a lot of the mechanics that are in this game that I'll talk about here in just a second kind of really screw you over. It's like everything is stacked against you. It's almost, I mean, I won't say you can't win on this one, but it's almost impossible on either side. So I'm going to pick Brigadier General. Just because, you know, why not? So for this one, we'll put in our name. And you can see here, we're going to start out with three politics, one in economy, two in medicine, one in training, one in army organization, and two in logistics. And, yeah, so minus 2.5% cost to veteran training or veteran recruitment. Uh, 7.5 percent to income. We get a 2.5 percent discount on uh, everything, basically, and a 7.5 percent increase in recruiting. So the recruiting one is the one we're going to do because as we're playing as the Confederacy, the the longer this war goes on, the harder, the less and less troops you're going to have to replenish. So we have one core. We don't need the advisor. So let us begin. That's going to throw us straight into a battle. And uh, we're going to be attacking this fort. I'm not going to skip through this because I already know. And I've got it paused for just a second. I always like these maps. How you can do... Well... For some reason it's not letting me change it. But um, I've played this one so many times and this this map's very similar to the way that they laid out the Gettysburg map um, which one of my complaints about that game was it was really hard to get a feel for line of sight with artillery pieces in uh, in that game um, it had a line of sight button but it, it still didn't really give you a good lay of the land it's a little bit better now and I think no, that's not what I wanted either. I think there's a way to toggle. I haven't really messed with it. There was a way to toggle the, the uh, topographical map. And it looks like it is. It was only in, uh, that it was only in uh, Gettysburg. But that was one of the problems where you really couldn't see the lines. And as you see... I mean, you can tell where some of these slopes are. Like, there's a little bit of a rise here. This area in here is mostly flat. There's a hill there. And there's this is almost a ridge system that starts about right here and then goes up through there. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, they did kind of fix it. There it is. That was the one I was looking for. I always play in this mode because it's easier to kind of see where your hills are because I rely pretty heavily on artillery and in this first match you really don't have artillery so you're taking advantage of terrain or not terrain but uh, cover uh, so you see here dense forest slows down movement and makes volleys a little inaccurate but it's perfect for concealment uh, which concealment is a big part of this game as we'll see in later battles um, Houses, same thing here, fortified position terrain that enhances cover for defense and defensive capabilities. Um, same thing, it talks about the fields, open, fast movement, accurate, uh, very low cover. And then you've got fords here, water passes, slows movement down, uh, slows down movement very much and makes your units ineffective and extremely vulnerable to gunfire. And then we've got... 
Uh, we got the fields here. Increases your stealth. And it's good ground for skirmishers, but makes your volleys a little inaccurate. And I think... I think that is all of them. But yeah, you, you have to... You have to really use the terrain to your advantage. Um, I won't go off on a tangent talking about War of Rights and how people like to kind of stand out in the middle of, of no uh, middle of fields and just slog away at everybody like it's a reenactment because it's totally wrong. Um, you need to be using cover wherever you can find it if you want to survive. That being said, <coughs> let's go ahead and start here. We've got a group of skirmishers. I'm going to go ahead and get them across the field. So you just click on them and then right click across. You can drag them so that they follow the road. Which is one of the gripes that I have about this game. Um, if you've played something like Scourge of War, you can actually use your troops and tell them to follow roads. You can put them somewhere and then you can say follow the roads. This one, I have to take every unit and I have to drag them up a road because you get a, a uh, see there it says speed is 100%. If I hold it over here, speed's 100%. Speed's 100%. Cover is 50. And there we go. First engagement. Now I'm going to double click these guys. Put them right there. But see how that is? How they, they'll quit following the road and they'll just cut straight through the woods and it slows their movement down. When you go into the woods, it's 60% it's, uh, speed and then 160% cover. So 60% over being over what you are. And you can see down here in the lower corner where our morale is, our cover. We're gonna, we should get about 60. And it's going to go on up to 90. And then the condition. And I'm going to put these guys over here in the woods. And take our cavalry. Spin them around this way. And I want to get over here. And I want the cavalry over here for a very specific reason. Enemy reinforcements are going to be coming from this way. So they're going to be coming out of this area through the marshland. And they're going to be going for the fort. I'm wanting to get my guys over here. The reason being because there's a huge killing field right here. And I want to make advantage of kind of a blind spot because their units are going to be stacked up here. I've played this scenario quite a bit. And one of the things that really sucks about it is that you have to, you have to, you have to beat this scenario in order to continue. If you don't, then you have to start the game over again. So we're going to, we're going to not screw up. And there's Union Infantry. So like I said, they're going to be going up here. And I'm going to keep these guys concealed just so I know where they are. You, there's two ways to win this battle. You can either you can either make a race to try and get to the fort before they do. Um, which your, your condition is probably going to be so poor you'll get overrun. Or you do like this and then you kind of stack your units up here on the right side of the fort and then you just slam into them. Guess which one I'm going to use? Because I knew that there were going to be units coming in here. So we're going to make our way through the town. And like I said, this is the tedious part because I have to tell every one of these units which way I want them to go. supplies up there turn them off. and put you there put you in the houses Press it. <clears throat> one of the easiest ways to if you want to route an enemy is take advantage of flanks and in the Confederate Army you have a couple of options it's a little bit harder because uh, you're going to have a smaller uh, number of recruits that you can pull from. So you're either going to be um, you're either going to be in really big brigades, or you're going to use a bunch. 
you're going to use few large brigades or you're going to use several smaller brigades. I've tried it both ways and I've pretty much figured out that in using if you use larger brigades all you're doing is shooting yourself in the foot it's better off using smaller ones like no more than 1500 uh, men per brigade specifically for the reason that um, you won't burn through your recruits as much and it gives you a lot more flexibility because as the war goes on the Union brigades are going to get bigger because you know they draft people and this that and the other alright so we're gonna stage these guys here so that way they don't get a lot of artillery fire these guys are hidden let's show them by that we've got our line of sight from the elevation here um, I think that's all of the troops that they have coming in right now so there's only two units up here I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward time and I'm gonna stack up these three brigades to over here and then we're gonna slam into this side and then we're gonna hold this side down with these two brigades that's the plan so one of the things I like about this game is that it, it you can use uh, tactics like that holding and pinning pinning down a move uh, an enemy position and then flanking it which is ex pretty much what I'm going to do I'm going to keep them occupied on this right side and then I'm going to slam into them with the other one so uh, you didn't go where I wanted you to go ahead and run him also that lets these guys rest a bit Condition is very key. If uh, the condition of your unit gets too low, they will run. Uh, another thing that I like is see how they go into column instead of um, staying in a line formation because lines are much harder to move forward than a column is. <clears throat> One of the things I don't like about it is you cannot toggle between the two. They're pretty much independent like they will determine what's best for them and I'm like no you need to be moving or you need to be in a line now because just like in real life a column is very susceptible to um, musket fire artillery fire and things like that so while they're moving up we'll go ahead and move this one up uh, we'll go ahead and move this one up and I'm gonna leave him there there's two artillery batteries here. That's what battery A and battery B is. So we have to get rid of these three units and those two batteries. Now I have you got to remember this is a two-day battle, which sucks because the Union one is only a one-day battle, um, or at least a th no, it is a two-day battle. I'm sorry. Um, the Union one is a, is more difficult than this one. So let's see. We'll get up here. Once they get engaged, then we'll, we'll run these guys up. Run these two. Once they get engaged, we'll run this one forward. We'll run him forward. He's going to make a swing. Because this is the bigger uh, brigade, I'm going to use him to make the push. And I don't want to stand here very long because you see these guys are, they've already taken 58 casualties. And these guys are getting hit pretty hard too, so let's go ahead and charge. And general up. Echelon style attack. And he can charge. Uh, 
And if we're lucky, there they go. You see how they start turning white, so they're getting ready to break. So I want this unit and this unit here. And he's going to route, which I kind of figured. So you, you fire at these guys, you deal with this guy. Now they're going to start flanking, so now let's charge him. Get him rallied. The sooner I can get him rallied, I can take care of this, this flank here. Changes the formation. Take the cavalry forward. Temper to go up here. Over there. Good deal with him. This unit's getting ready to be destroyed, and I'm just going to use these skirmishers to harass them as they're as they're uh, routing. I'm going to use my cavalry here, and we're just going to start raking these guys up. Get him in here. Where's my supplies? Get him in here. Now, everybody that you have in the fort, unless they've changed it, um, if you have units in the fort, they will stay in the fort for the next day. Uh, one of the things that this game does well is momentum. Um, you don't want to run out of momentum. If you get an advantage, you want to keep pressing it. And you have to understand when your momentum is gone because the AI is smart enough that um, they will take advantage of your mistake. If you leave a hole, they will go through it, uh, for better or for worse. This is going to be a hit and run. But what that's done is that's, that's uh, kind of taken their, well, they took the bait to an extent. Ramparts. Readouts. Here, get you in the fort, get you in the fort, and get you in the fort. Battery B's been destroyed. And they're exhausted. These guys are almost exhausted, so no more running. Here, so the the aura of the commanders, um, you get their their morale will go up higher. It'll go up higher faster if you uh, um, have a commander nearby. So get up here, and you get up here. I'm gonna say something about these defensive positions. It looks like they're great um, because they do give you 100% cover or thereabouts. The problem that I have with them is they reduce your field of fire, which has never made any sense to me. Um, like, if you look at this guy, you see how far out the cone goes for their field of fire. And then you click on this one, and it's not quite two-thirds of it. It never made any sense for, for me like that. And uh, so it's very easy to get suckered into going into a defensive position and then uh, be just destroyed by an enemy who has a longer range than you do because they're in a line formation. 
And I don't know if that's just some some sort of checks and balances that they have so that defensive positions aren't so overpowered. Um, but it is kind of crazy to me that uh, that's how it works. Needless to say, we're early war and everybody's using uh, pretty much smooth wars. A couple of these might have rifles. But we're going to just, we're going to sit here and take it. Because, like I said, it's early war. Everybody has early war weapons. Um, our only job is going to be to destroy that battery. So I'm going to be taking the cavalry out here to do it. I'm trying to keep these guys pinned down because they're going to make a charge. So I'll use the cavalry to deal with this battery. Since it's over 50, we will end this. this portion early. And that gives all these guys a chance to rest, uh, so they'll be ready for the fight tomorrow. We're going to have to make it quick. If I lose Crocker, it's nothing in the world. I didn't know they were down there. I thought they were over here. But that's alright. I think it is kind of dumb that you have to destroy the battery, but that's that's my opinion. Let's go ahead and stop you. And I'll just go ahead and get these guys routed. This one. One of the nice things is that they do reload on the march. It takes a little bit longer. They're going to charge. This is going to fail. That was a very costly gamble. Even if you do have them by the flank, they outnumber you to one. Now we deal with these guys. Uh, let's see. Can field. Skirmishers forward. This, be, this unit's going to disappear. Well, we're going to counter charge them then. So I'm going to let them get out in the open. And Confederate sandwich. And that'll be the end of this unit. Go ahead and put the cavalry over here. It's a route, but it was worth it. One of the the other things that really sucks is the the game is really touchy when it comes to if you encounter one straggler, like if this cavalry encountered one straggler from this unit they would immediately go into melee with the entire unit. Um, and also, units routing do not take any, any sort of consideration into where their lines are and where the enemy lines are. So what ends up happening is... Uh, so what ends up happening is you can have an enemy unit that's routing and they actually end up routing behind your lines and then they rally and then they're attacking you from the rear it's the biggest BS thing in this game and I've had it happen so many times alright so we got the fort because we had to destroy that stupid battery um, so now we're gonna be defending it there's going to be a, uh, a gunboat over here, 
And then we're going to have, well, two of them. And then we're going to have Union coming from this way. Now, we did get some batteries. So we're going to be shelling these guys until, um, until our reinforcements come in. So what I normally do is I have two strong units up here. I put one unit in reserve behind them. In this case, it's going to be Siegfried. And we'll fast forward. My cavalry should be coming on the field here in just a minute. Uh, so now we just kind of wait. And it's an okay opening scenario. As you can see, here comes their, their reinforcements. There's my cavalry. So I'm going to take my cavalry back across here for two reasons. One, I'm going to be behind them so I can harass them. Two, uh, I'm going to try and get their cannons, and I'm going to try and get their uh, supplies. So there's one unit of artillery. And the way that the, the end of round works in this game is if you can... Any, any, any troops that either surrender to you or any supplies that are captured, you get additional recruits. It's not an exact science. I don't want to get too far out here because that infantry will turn around and come after me. But I am going to take these guys. I can get them without being molested. And I can possibly get their commander too. So I can kill him. Meaning that they won't get any kind of morale buffs. And I probably am going to get him. I think we're going to get weighed down here in the marsh. Maybe. All right, so we captured the supplies. God damn it. I didn't know that that's the first time that I've ever had a uh, general unit capture something. I was hoping that I was going to be able to kill him. Anyway, we'll go back and get it here in just a second, and then I'll... The artillery usually sets up right along in here, so... Don't run too damn far away. Union will classically attack from this side. They won't ever try and outflank you uh, on this opening engagement. They will try and do that um, in later ones. But they always try and make a charge up here. This, uh, this scenario is pretty much uh, boilerplate. There's not much to it. I'm just trying to get this... So that I can set up for the next one. Get him. I don't know why the supplies haven't been captured yet. There we go. Alright, get them out of the way. Now he's dealing with Nicholas. And there's my so we're going to take these guys up the road here. And we got their job. So let's take these guys. Okay. So what I'm planning on doing is I'm going to have a line behind them. The next one. Two. Now the reason why I was griping about having to do uh, individual movements down roads, it doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal now. But when you get to, like I was playing, I'm doing another playthrough on, the, and I was doing the Battle of Chancellorsville. And Chancellorsville, I had like a literal metric shit ton of units. Three core you know, I think it was like 60 brigades. And when you have to sit there and you have to tell every single unit, go down the road, go down the road, go down the road, it's an absolute mess. So that's my, that's why I gripe about it, because it is a little asinine to have to do that sort of thing. 
So, why this artillery should be surrounding right here in just a second. These guys are holding pretty good. They've taken 171 and killed 469. They've taken 175. They, these are from yesterday. So, and no surprise, we're going to charge them. Alright, so, here in just a second. I'm actually going to have these guys run because I'm going to slam into this unit while they're routing. And usually it doesn't take this long to uh, get an artillery battery to, to uh, They're not going to be able to hold it. So I'm going to have to run these units up faster. Alright, get over there in the woods. You're going to have to run too. Alright. Now I have to get ready. Part of it is because I didn't get this artillery soon enough. But part of it is because um, I didn't move these units fast enough. Alright, that's good. It also doesn't help that I'm talking through this either, so it's kind of distracting me. They're not going to be able to hold this because the canister fire from these guns is going to end up taking them. I, a lot of it is I'm just not paying attention as well as I normally do. Sometimes I think this game is random too. Like sometimes I can I can do the same movement twice and um, they'll react differently both times, which is it's good and bad. I think a lot of what got them was their commander died too. This Kemper Kemper's alive at six. So we've we've stopped this. If we can get back up there where we were, then we're fine. Well, they didn't take it. All right, whatever. Probably because they don't have as many men. Because we got tangled up in that charge yesterday, the, or the the previous one. You too. Good. Yeah, good volley on their part. Stupid skirmishers. Alright, let's clean up the playing field here a little bit. Alright, their cavern their artillery is out of commission for right now, so that's gonna be a big help to me. Holding up, they're holding up. That's a stupid thing to do. That charge should fall apart. That's another thing that happens too, is that they'll they'll turn to attack whoever's closest, and I don't want them to. I want them to keep firing on this guy. Because that just opened up their flank. Alright, we're gonna have to push now. Everybody. It's a brave and theoretically stupid maneuver, but that's what's gonna have to take. Because otherwise they're gonna destroy this piecemeal. It doesn't really matter. Um but I want to win this. So. 
We're gonna do something unexpected. We're gonna pull a 20th main on them. Let's see. Get up a little closer. Get up closer. Get up closer. You're gonna waste a shot, aren't you? That's right. Nobody expects this vanish. They're being surprisingly aggressive today because normally those attacks that they're doing right there fall apart before they make it up. I don't know if it's because I had the artillery there or not, but I'm going to take the cavalry over here and I'm going to slam into the back of the ground. And take a sick free. Back of the He's pretty much got the, these guys under control. They're going to be able to tank this charge. I'm going to charge into the back of Grant, and hopefully that will route him. Their condition is terrible. Um, that is the other thing. is that, um, In the early part of the war, charges cost a lot. Double quicking costs a lot of condition. So... You have to be a little sparingly with it. I'm going to be way more aggressive on this one just because they pissed me off. Yeah, they've refused to go because of reasons. They're coming back. This unit's got it back, so we actually... I could throw off skirmishers over here and then that would push them back. These guys are actually being surprisingly aggressive for skirmishers because normally skirmishers will fall back once they're, they're pressed, but it's probably because they have more. So I'm going to throw off just, you know, whatever skirmishers are available and I'm going to have them against this guy. And they're running out of ammo. Wonder why? Because I've got some supplies, bitch. So, that's a good indication. Get over here, you dumbasses. So they're going to try and charge. Get this condition up a little bit. And this should start making them fall back. Grant's falling to pieces, so let's try it again. Get them. And this is a fixed battle, too, as you can tell. It's just, I didn't have any choice over what I had. And the enemy is random. Because, like I said, I've, I've fought this battle several different times. And normally they will fall apart whenever they go to make the charge over the over the top. Um, every now and then, uh, did they break? They broke. Damn it. Alright. Be bold. Go get them, brave Kemper. I shall remember your name. Probably gonna make them break, would be my guess, because they are they were pretty much at the end of their road. Leave that freaking battleship alone. We need to be working on this guy. Alright, there goes Grant. 
stop. If he gives them a volley while they're routing, they'll probably break. Exhausted. I know you're exhausted. Bear with me. I, I theoretically know what I'm doing. So now that Grant's out of the way, we can make a Hail Mary pass around here. Alright, you're good. Just fire into their ass. They're gonna make a charge. Like they just routed. Perfect. We're gonna get it up close and personal with Brooke. We've got just enough. The white bar is the uh, supply. We've got just enough. We're gonna get it real tight. We're gonna get so tight on them, it's gonna be uncomfortable. We've got them surrounded on three sides. Well, three and a half. It's going to cost us pretty dearly. What are we? What are we looking at? We've we've got 1,153 left. We've lost 63%. It's it's a drop in the bucket, you know. I mean, you know, it, it's not like this isn't really going to hurt us all that bad. I mean, yeah, we're going to have fewer when we go into the next one, but these guys are going to get a shitload of experience, so I'm not too worried about it. See, they've already gotten... I don't think they started with one star, but they've already... They've already gained a lot of experience. Yeah, that's right. Keep charging. Alright. These guys should be forced. Give them a volley. This one should break. Close. Alright, everybody deal with this group. I love how they were just routing and now they're charging. They're like, oh yeah, we got this. Alright, you're gonna have to go deal with them. Then. Yep, thank you. <laughs> Alright, so what did we do? We did, uh, we had 3266, came out with 2301. Not the best, not the worst. We killed 252 men, took out 8 guns. They killed 78 of ours and took out four. Um, not terrible, not the best. What else? Got that. Um, let's see here. Who had the highest losses? Yeah, we took some pretty bad losses. But, you know, I'll have, uh, I'll have plenty of stuff that we can upgrade for these guys, so... It's all good. Alright, we got some goods. So let's go. And I'll talk about this very briefly. Metals, these are just kind of eye candy. They really don't do anything. Uh, so you see, we got 95 prisoners exchanged for 95. There is a cap on that. It's not like you can capture their entire army and then get 10,000 recruits. Um, if you capture like a thousand, um, you can get up, I think it's up to a thousand. If you capture like 3,000 guys, it doesn't really matter. You're still only going to get 1,000. So just to do like a general overview of this, this is where we build our army up. We're only going to have two brigades in the beginning. Um, and we go over to the battle map here. We'll look at the reports in a second. These are where we check. 
uh, if I go in here and just look to see the next battle is only going to require three brigades. And that's what we have. We have three brigades. So. <clears throat> now, for career, I can choose where I want to spend these points that I got from the battle. And for right now... Now, one of the things that I don't like about this is it never tells you, uh, as level increases... It says the next level will give one core, two divisions per core, four brigades per division, and 1,500. So I'm going to put it into that and then apply. And you see we still don't have four. Uh, so it's like every two levels. It says next level, but it doesn't tell you what the next level is. Um, you see right now we're up at two. So I, it's just one of those things that aggravates me about this game from time to time. We don't need to sell anything. Um, yes. We'll get rid of these. And we'll hold on to this for right now. So I'm going to very, very quickly, because we're coming up on an hour, I'm going to assign some new commanders here. Uh, we generally want our higher rank to be the divisional commander, because that increases their command in their unit. Do we have any commanders that are ready? We've got Archer, but he's a Brigadier General, so it doesn't. So we'll put him in charge of the Brigade. We'll put a Colonel in charge of 1st Brigade here. Kemper is fine with doing that. And then Cabell, who is our artillerist, we will put in... So, one of the things that aggravates me is is how they list this stuff. So, command is pretty obvious. Uh, your command... The higher your command, the more men that you're able to command efficiently. So, like... Let's take this brigade right here. Well, let's take this one because it's a lieutenant colonel. Alright, it's got 213 soldiers and it has a command rating of 45. Let's say I go up to 15. Alright... It stays at 45, but let's say I put a major in charge. Now you see the command drops down to 33. Uh, these guys down here drop because we're using rookie recruits. If I do veteran, then they go up. Or they stay the same. But watch the command. Well, it starts out at 33 anyway. It might not make any difference until you get up in like 2000 or something like that. But the command rating goes up and down based off of your commander. So the higher the rank, the more command, uh, the more of a command rating you're going to have. Meaning that they'll listen to orders better, they behave better in battle, so on. Uh, where's Kemper? There he is. And let's just see what it says, because I have spent a while since I read it. If a unit officer's division commander comes casually to war, the command level will be reduced. And uh, command experience from the experience of the unit. Command level affects the efficiency according to the size of the unit. And so, yeah. Now, efficiency levels up by making kills and... Okay, reload speed, the morale is pretty self-explanatory, stamina is self-explanatory, firearms, shooting at targets. So this should be, this should be accuracy, this should be like performance, um, and then of course melee is how well they deal hand-to-hand. -hand. It's not a bad system, but some of it doesn't make much sense, like when you go to do the, uh, I guess the, ugh. Oh, I've been fighting with a sinus inspection for about a week now. Um, stamina efficiency. There's just certain things like when we go in here. Stamina and efficiency. It really should say stamina and then plus five to performance. Instead of efficiency. Because efficiency can mean many different things. It does kind of halfway explain it. That it's... it's um, 
improvement in their shooting and reload speed and melee strength. I generally will go for this one because for me, uh, being able to reload faster is important, especially for artillery. So I'm just going to give him that one. Um, I'm not going to adjust this right now because I have a special naming scheme, and in the next episode, I'll talk about um, how I normally set up my armies. And oh, that didn't unlock. That's weird. Anyway, um, I'll talk about that in the next episode. So, uh, in the next one, I'll set up this army and go over all of this stuff and how I normally set up my army, and we'll fight the next battle. So, see you next time.